before I talk about fractures and uh, the cause, um, bursitis and tendonitis and among other things I need to talk about, I'm just going to talk about inflammation for now um, and the um, and its stages, okay? Um, so uh, first off, I think I'm just going to um, talk about the definition so I, um, to first start it, okay? Um, if I say acute, uh, meaning it's the, uh, the rapid onset when a trauma happens, um, uh, the short um, cause or, or when um, the injury occurred or something like that, and it usually uh, has a severe symptom, right? It, it's in a case okay, phase. It will be usually um, red, swollen, you know, and I'm going to read all of these, and because that has to happen, right? As soon as it got injured, um, you know, histamine has to um, uh, go right into the where the injury is, and and it, the fluid also. Um, but I will be um, step by step be referring to that later on. So an injury is an interruption in the continu continuity of a tissue. So if there's um, discontinuity, say it got, let's say somebody get get a cut, that's a discontinuity continuity right of the tissue whether if it's just a scratch or a, a you know a severe injury right so acute phase response is a constellation of systematic effects uh, which occur as a result of infection injury and inflammation so uh, inflammation is a non-specific immune protective response by the body immediately immediately following an injury in an attempt to reestablish continuity. So the reactions produced during uh, inflammation may be harmful, okay? So we need to be aware of and the cautious, that's what I meant. So if a person is seeking for um, therapy, for facial therapy or for um, a massage therapy and they are, are inflamed, um, first and foremost, we're gonna have to ask uh, um, Several questions. Um, uh, the reason why and and those are happening, right? So we need to follow a um, systematic approach. Okay. So cardinal signs of inflammation. Um, inflammation can occur in a few minutes, hours, or even days following an injury. So at this time, a complex series of events or acute phase response occur, leading to ultimate repair of tissue, either by regeneration or uh, it's also called first intention healing or, or, or scar tissue formed by dense connective tissue intention, second intention healing or combination of two, okay? So um, I'm gonna mention um, um, some wordings here which you know, cor corresponds to the symptom that's happening during a few phase. For example, redness, it's called rubor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right either, but rubor redness. Because uh, I, I I guess if you will be watching my videos, you guys will know um, there are words that I cannot pronounce, hard to pronounce, and I have to take my my bloody time to pronounce it before I can. And because I'm in a rush mode uh, right now, so I'm trying to get get this out of my um my wording so this makes me so so um bad but thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this um as you know we you, you're sharing um a sport uh, on my journey thank you so um redness or rubber uh injured capillaries allow whole blood to flow into the wound in an attempt to c c cleanse foreign and injurious uh debris debris from the side. So platelets and white blood cells co coagulate, right? To uh, seal off anything, um, you know, because anything that uh, happened from, from the injured, um, let's say um, the injured area, I'll say, sorry. Um, it will temporarily kind of, how do you call it, gate itself, gate, gate it and say, hey, ho hold on, we're going to have to guard this because this is injured, we're going to, have to incorporate a lot of you know a lot of um, soldiers whatever they have their own job to do to make sure that this is not going to further injure 
therefore you know that's why the inflammation happens and you know um, um, swelling you know the redness happens right okay um, so um, non-injured nearby blood vessel dilate in response to chemical mediators namely histamine right uh, that's why I have it immediately histamine um, comes running uh, for rush food um, heat okay calor that's the word for it caused by increased blood flow and chemical mediators such as histamine okay so histamine and um, an, an increase of uh, blood flow um, may um, creates the, uh, the heat uh, the warmth okay on the uh, the area of the injured place of the uh, inflamed area okay and then for pain or dolor, um, strong stimuli during tissue damage activate nociceptors um, to endure harm um, harmlation. And this stimuli includes strong, sharp pressure, electrical current, heat or cold, swelling, chemical mediators such as histamine and bra bradykinin. Bradykinin, uh, those two will come running to um, to promote the healing, right? That has to happen. I will do a video of that or I will talk about it in a more um, step by step way. The pain stimulus is an important one because it warns the cortex in the brain of current and impending tissue damage, thereby, thereby stimulating our fight or flight response. Okay. So, what's going to happen is, um, a, you know, um, there's going to be a lot of pain, and, you know, this is, um, this stimulus is really needed because because if we don't have pain you know we're gonna still move that injured area right if we're not feeling any pain you, you know how human beings are let's say let's just forget about anything that i've said here let's say if there's we're not able to um feel pain so that's why pain is important so if there's no pain you know and the purpose of the pain there is so that the the muscle or any of the joint involved will not be able to move it. So it's doing its job to prevent it, inhibiting it from doing its action for its own sake. So because it's needed for the healing process, right? And like I said, if um, if a human being, if for instance, God didn't produce pain, we're going to be kicked, you know, hitting ourselves and we're not getting any pain. And in the instance of um, a fracture, and the fracture um, is more so a bone inflammation. We don't know it could be, uh, you know, uh, you know, well, inflammation is more so an injury, right? An injury to any soft tissue could be or bone, uh, you know, fracture uh, is pertaining to bone, right? But any injury could happen, any in the muscle, in the soft tissue, right? So if that occurs, inflammation will happen, and then, you know, edema, redness, and all that that I'm mentioning right now. But if pain is not there. Um, it's a protective mechanism also, although it's really a pain. And in life too, that's how it is because it's protecting us from doing further damage to our life. So if God has to inject us some pain, and that's how we should raise kids too. It's not all dandy. <laughs> we need to tell them that at an early age. Life, like how um, parents always say, hey, um, money doesn't grow on trees. Why don't we generalize that more so? Right? Life is not really, a, you know, a bed full of roses, right? So we, ne we need to introduce those little pains here and there so that they feel, they um, experience that at home. And you experience it with them. Because if they're not prone to that, when they go outside, right? Going back, so if we do not have that ability to experience pain, we're just going to go ahead and do whatever we'll do because without looking at it, right, it's not there, then we don't know it's there because there's no pain. Therefore, pain is needed. Okay. I hope everybody understands. Okay, so swelling or tumor. Um, edema occurs due to excessive inter interstitial fluid in the tissue. This interstitial um, fluid consists mainly of water and there's also electrolytes and uh, plasma proteins and white blood cells usually. Okay, which escape through damage and dilated, um, dilated blood vessels. 
Lymph vessels at the site of the injury dilate to accept the excess fluid, but close spastically proximal to the injury to, pre to prevent infection or foreign matter from infecting the whole body. I'm trying to rush it. Sorry, guys. Okay, so um, so edema happens when um, okay, so because um, okay, our our blood is composed of plasma proteins, electrolytes, and and all that uh, white blood cells and red blood cells, right? So, um, what's happening is this uh, this in a uh, fluid, uh, right? That's why when when there's more flow of the arterial distribution and then and it's not going uh, back properly to a venous a good a venous return and that's like a backlog there's a edema happening um, it's because there's um, a blockage of more movement right more contraction uh, for, uh, from the muscle um, then there's more uh, venous return in the instance of um, of uh, if it's inflamed, injured, or whatsoever in the case, trauma, um, contusion, in any case, um, it will also um, be able to um, have that um, ability of to be able to have edema, and, and, and in that case, it's also needed at that at that time, and and the way to um, eliminate those is we have to go to movement or if we are immobile, we can do some um, um, MLD that our therapist can do upon us. Um, you know, uh, a lot of like techniques that could reduce, you know, the edema for the time being. But like I said, it's because of that, um, you know, the fluid that's really needed during at that time. But that needs to be taken out after and, and you know, those are techniques uh, to be done. So, um, loss of function, um, so, due to the uh, primarily to a uh, dolor and tumor and helps prevent further injury of the affected, um, area, right? Like I said, um, for the pain, right? Like our body needs to, uh, f uh, fix it. Like it's all, we're trying to fix it. So the body has to be immobile as well. Um, it has to have that uh, function. If, if it has the function of to move, it also has that ability to, to inhibit it. Hey, um, you, you can't do that right now. You know, the, our body has that ability. So hold on until you're healed. So it will, um, it will actually have that component of that healing process. Everything, you know, the redness, everything has to happen. You know, unfortunately, it has to happen, the pain and the loss of function for the time being. To protect the area is, itself that was damaged, fractured, or whatever the case may be. Okay, and now um, I'm gonna talk about quickly the contraindication. Okay, uh, we're not gonna interfere with the um, you know healing process, any joint play, any um, massages. In, you know, is not indicated really at this point, especially on the area itself. Um, there's no um, any you know, circulatory techniques from any massage therapist or uh, physiotherapist that could promote uh, circulation uh, from the injury itself or the inflamed area, distal. Anything uh, distal should be avoided at this point, okay? Um, and, you know, if they're, they're, they're still going to be seeking for physiotherapies or, or massage therap therapists, right? Um, any circular emotion should be avoided. This is promoting circulation for the circular uh, for a proper circulation of the whole entire body. We don't want that because um, it will uh, create a congestion in where the um, inflammation is happening. Okay. Okay. So avoid heavy application of ice if injury is severe. Uh, upper frozen towel, cold foot, or arm bath. Um, frozen donut rings and cold figure eight wrap. Okay, chirotherapy and ice mas or ice massage is called chirotherapy. Okay, um, because with um, what's happening with ice, you know, it's gonna create some analgesic uh, effect, right? Um, immediately after I know it's painful, but immediately will, you know, 
and paint for them. Okay, so avoid starting startling techniques such as shaking and rocking due to extreme guarding. Okay, there's gonna be muscle guarding, so um, if you uh, rock it um, more or shake it, it's gonna perhaps produce more of that, which we don't need. We're, we're supposed to decrease the muscle guarding, but keep in mind we're not gonna eliminate it, right? Okay, uh, do not remove bandages, braces, or splints unless a doctor has given approval. So for any physiotherapist or massage therapist, unless the doctor has advised to, um, to remove the pads, okay, then yeah. Okay, so inflammation. I'm going to talk about inflammation now. So I did talk about really about, um, you know, the cardinal signs. So now in inflammation itself is a, the response or reaction of the body, right? Or, or, or the vascularized, vascularized tissue due to a trauma or injury at the cellular level, or it could be local or it could be generalized. So inflammation could be um, local again or generalized, meaning the whole body, okay? The purpose is to contain and isolate injurious agents and destroy invading microorganisms, right? So there's fungi, bacteria, or parasites, or protozoa inactive to toxins, and finally achieve healing and repair tissue. So um, I mentioned the cardinal signs of inflammation, uh, the short form as fresh, we can just call that, right? The redness, the heat, and all that, okay? Pain, redness, immobility, swelling, heat, um, and there's that um, Latin um, word for it as well that I had you know, mentioned. Um, these events occur due to chemical mediators such as histamine, bradykin, serotonin and protoglobulin. okay so they all work together to make sure you protect um, the injured area it causes inflammation um, because of um, burns perhaps you know and that's why it causes inflammation Chem chemical irritants frostbite toxins infection by pathogens physical injury uh, blunt or penetrating immune re reactions due to hypersensitivity uh, radiation, foreign bodies, splinters, or dirt, stress, or trauma, or alcohol. So that's why it is really important that when a client is coming, um, you know, and seeking for therapy, we need to know. Uh, we need to know um, prior to to the inflammation and all that because what could be causing it is really important. We cannot create a, a plan, a treatment plan for them without knowing the cause. This is, it, you know, the edema or, inf or sorry, inflammation, redness or everything. I know it's a trauma. We all know that. But um, prior to um, this happen, there could, could be an underlying condition as well. And that alone, that incident could trigger something else, right? So, um, so essential components of inflammation is that, that it's sedate. So it's extra vascular fluid that is high in protein content. Transudate is an extra vascular fluid that is low in protein, okay, resulting from hydrostatic imbalance across vessel walls, okay. So um, edema excess fluid in the interstitial tissue or ser a serous compartment um, that may be um, transu transudate, exudate, or the accumulation of blood, okay. So I'm going to talk about the types of healing this time, okay. So primary or first intention healing is healing occurs when there is tissue loss, but the wound edges are approximated, okay? So um, it's approximated, so it can be uh, uh, put to together by tape or, I don't know, staples, sorry. And then this produces a small uh, pliable scar and little collagen formation and matting of the fascial layers of, uh, around the wound. So there's, you know, there's, if, if it, okay, because less collagen, less scar, if we put it that way, right? So if there's more, more collagen um, being, um, like, uh, how do you call it, being uh, scouted uh, during the healing process, uh, so there's going to be more scar that's going to be produced. And keep in mind, scar too is only 18% strength. Um, you know, based on the 100% strength of the muscle, of the integrity of the skin itself, right? Okay, so secondary or sec, uh, second intention healing results when there is a uh, extensive tissue loss 
and the wood edges are not communicated or approximated. So it's not as opposite of what the other one is approximated. This one is not pro uh, approximated. It even takes lo uh, longer and produces more collagen and granulated tissue, therefore causing random scar formation and adhesion deeper into the soft tissue, okay? So that's what's happening for the second integrative healing, the tires. So a stage in the, the inflammatory response is depending on the textbook, right? There's some overlap, but here I'm gonna um, differentiate the overlap between stages of inflammation, okay? Okay, so different guidelines and time frames of all the stages associated with inflammation must be taken into consideration. You need to always know that. We tell patient in the associated time frame and the nature of the trauma. Th these stages are acute, subacute, early subacute, and late subacute, and chronic, right? So um, sometimes they overlap, and sometimes it depends on the severity, and sometimes it depends on the healing time, or depends on, on whether was it more... Um, how do you call it, exacerbated, that the, the healing stage, the healing phase took longer than than the normal uh, process of, of healing, right, those factors. So I'm going to talk about the acute stage, okay? The acute stage, the time frame of the, the stage is short, beginning from the time of the trauma, lasting up to three days, okay? Post injury, okay, sorry, uh, with the beginning of healing. So... On the fourth day, the beginning is the, uh, the healing is gonna take place, right? Symptom picture is the same as the aforementioned redness, um, swelling, heat, pain, and sometimes loss of function. Often due to the nature of the trauma, a muscle guarding spasm and loss of function due to pain from the nociceptors. So if bruising is present, it will be black, blue, red, or purple. Consideration at the acute stage, we're gonna put rice, positioning should be appropriate, comfortable, not to stress the injury site, Goals are to limit the inflammatory process, and we have to decrease the pain or, or swelling. If there is any pain, there's swelling. There's, if any swelling, there's pain. Decrease as an aspiring to prevent re-injury. That's something that we need to avoid, right? The stress factor. Protective, protective spasm may be reduced but not removed. Um, treatment of compensatory structures and hydrotherapy may also be cool or cold to decrease pain receptors, okay? So um, whether um, tissue therapy or massage therapy, there, we're going to have to know that we have to address the compensatory um, um, structures, right? The, the one that is being compensated because of the injury that's happening, right? So uh, we need to treat that as opposed to the injury um, uh, area itself, okay? Okay, um, so for the um, subacute stage, this time frame can last from... Um, two days up to three weeks or three days up to three weeks post trauma of injury. Signs of inflammation diminish during this time. Wound closure takes place for about five to eight days for skin and muscle injuries. Ligaments and tendon takes approximately three to five. Okay. So symptom picture, the affected tissue is still very fragile and not recommended to treat on site unless using indirect techniques. You know, such as GTO, um, uh, the oculus contract uh, with minimal force it extended uh, is a type of uh, PNF stretch. Okay, so early subacute stage um, is the stage to last from two um, from two days from two days and continue after two weeks. The symptoms um, for up to three weeks, I would say, in this one. Okay. The, the symptom picture of because the subacute stage and early subacute um, stage and late subacute uh, they overlap. So now I'm on the subacute stage, I'm just explaining the subacute. And the symptom picture uh, still have some signs that appear to be pink and warm, slightly edematous character and decreased painful tissue. Spasm decreased, but there is still some bruising present, similar to the acute stage. So pain occurs when there is a stretch on the tissue or if it's under resistance, okay? Treating in early subacute, so we have to ele elevate affected area when needed. Cool hydrotherapy, cool hydrotherapy and um, MLD if needed. MLD is a short form for man manual lymphatic dra drainage, okay? 
I made an, a video of that, but I, I haven't posted. But I keep mentioning MLV, but it means heat mat manual lymphatic drainage. It's for um, any swelling. But that means to decrease swelling. Um, so we have to make sure we decrease the spasm. Hydrotherapy would consist of contrast cold to hot. Uh, three to one is the ratio. So compensatory muscle is well um, have to be addressed. Uh, so this technique proximal to the site with uh, trigger point release to muscle that refer into that specific area. Okay. Techniques directed toward the injury site as not to put a drag on the any of the injury site for not putting any drag. Okay, even the skin, the surrounding uh, tissue. Um, you must have used to uh, like one hand to um, use the drag to stop the drag, right? So even if in a passive motion, you know, we'll try to not drag the injured area, okay? Okay, um, this stop to the injury only slight muscle squeezing, stroking, and uh, vibration, okay? And passive range of motion to the effective uh, area and within, um, you know, client's tolerance, right? Progressing on site only, uh, fa uh, passive uh, free movements. So meaning the, the, you know, somebody, a friend, a neighbor, a family member, or loved ones, and the therapist can be able to move because this will promote, um, you know, if there's any uh, swelling, right? Uh, as long as it's, it's pain free. Okay, um, it has to be mid range. Okay, so late subacute, this uh, time frame lasts from second week to the third week of the subacute stage. So, symptom picture, picture may be localized swelling in pockets, a great decrease in, um, in the stage, except if force in ranges that uh, stretch newly laid down collagen fibers. Some muscle weaknesses may be present, and bruising will turn yellow brown green and finally disappear right so treating in love uh, in late subacute sorry uh, um we have to really decrease any edema uh, by doing mlt um, passive uh, range of motion done by a skilled uh, therapist um, decreased uh, trigger points associated with um in the compensatory structures because what's happening is the compensatory compensatory uh, structures are doing twice the job because of the other structure is is um, injured right so in that case that compensatory structure is going to develop some trigger points uh, start to increase strength with isometric and concentric contractions unless this is active free so we're going to slowly introduce to um, start bringing um, the strength or to to um, to keep the strength of the muscle integrity of the muscle we're going to do some isometric contraction meaning Asymmetric is there's no movement happening. So if I were to do a bicep, a bicep um, contraction, so it's not moving. So I'm just contracting it, but this is putting um, force to um, resist it. Okay, so I'm doing this, you know, as an isometric contraction. I'm just doing submaximal, and it's a maximal force, but it's really not contracting like a usual, right? because it's just introducing that um, strength again to the muscle, from the brain to the muscle, right? Okay. And um, hydrotherapy would consist of contrast, hot and cold, three to one ratio again. Skin rolling, um, well, we're still under the, the subacute stage, like again, this overlaps. Skin rolling, gentle fascial technique. There's gonna be a lot of um, in this stage because um, contractors start to happen and um, and there's a lot of adhesion maturing around this time so we're gonna try to avoid um, you know to eliminate them okay Fr gentle friction you know to decrease the adhe uh, adhesion formation is, is really crucial uh, but we're gonna have to uh, make sure that these are done by a uh, skilled uh, therapist okay Flashing of the area to promote uh, uh, drainage. Um, range of motion range of motion to return full range progressive not for. So um, if that person should seek for a physical therapist to uh, or although massage therapist could also prescribe that and develop a plan for them because 
Um, it's really crucial that they have that um, guidance to proper train the muscle again to regain its integrity. Okay, so conic stage um, time frame for this stage overlaps late subacute stage from the third week post injury and can last up to two years. No evidence of inf inflammation is present, like edema and possibly some loss of range of motion due to scar tissue formation. So um, it may be present if there is um, uh, excessive overpressure put on the affected area, usually if there has been no previous treatment. So if we're not seeking for therapy, um, so inflammation is going to occur more so and, and it's not going to be good because um, it's going to be in a chronic stage. It's not healing uh, regularly, right? So a proper skilled therapist, um, it has to be registered, uh, needs to um, to uh, address those concerns um, so that the brain and the muscle and the integrity of the area itself will be back to its uh, normal function, okay? So treating in chronic stage, reduce adhesion to the more vibrant pores that, that rate subacute um, Information tolerance, right? Soothing techniques interspersed to decrease um, SNS firing. So we have to um, do, uh, consider those. So we're gonna we're not gonna tire or exacerbate the fungus, more so to speak. So it has to be just soothing techniques or um, a gradual techniques. In the in the case of a uh, facial therapy, it has to be done gradually. Acid for stretching held up to one minute. Um, so we're gonna keep that in mind again for personal trainer or um, physical therapist. The joint pain techniques in all range of motion, all grades with oscillation. Special work to all on-site structures and surrounding affected areas. Decrease is structures and hypertonicity and increase range of motion. So um, decreased trigger points in affected muscle release is something that um, it needs to be done because like I said, the compensatory uh, structures are developing trigger points. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the other limb or could be in the same limb, but the proximal or something like that because it's compensating for the for the injured part. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, the next topic will be um, fractures.